Star Trek is one of the few science fiction universes that grapples with the idea that money may someday become obsolete. It's a world where people are no longer interested in accumulation of things. In this world, the way to cultivate status is by talent and intellect for the betterment of ourselves and humanity. So today on our episode of the Big Band Podcast, we will talk about the economics of Star Trek, which basically means that um, how do we change from, a, like, like I said, you know, from a society that's obsessed with accumu accumulating things to a society where basically you know money is not no longer needed <laughs> um, I don't know I think we, we we've been programmed to want things for a few decades now and or brainwashed to to want things for a few decades now how can we undo that well it's yeah basically it's it's how do we change the narrative of, you know, it, and it's really like, like you were said, it's, it's, bra it's brainwashing, it's AKA marketing, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, advertising and all that stuff. Um, I think, I think the basis for, for us to change, uh, we are having dialogue as to how to reach that, that future. Uh, what I mean by that is, from a te technological standpoint, we are, you know, creating or in the process of creating an entity that becomes smarter than us, aka AI. Um, How is that going to play out? Well, we've already talked about it before. We still really don't know. <laughs> uh, but the potential is there to be good. Whether that happens, then the door opens for us to shift our time spent doing, um, you know, AKA work towards doing what this potential future could be, right? Where we really are bettering ourselves by being better scientists, better something, right? Where we are putting our, you, our, our, our skills, inherent skills that, that, you know, in this case, our AI might not have like creativity to use. Um, the, other, the other angle is the economical one, which is if AI, you know, this helps us displace or create new types of jobs, as we mentioned in the previous episode. Uh, what does the economic model have to change? What, is it, what does that mean? It means, as you know, a couple of days ago, Switzerland put a boat out for their citizens whether or not they wanted to adopt universal basic income, which basically means that they or every citizen would receive at the minimum. 200 I think it was like 2500 2500 dollars plus like 600 more for a kid for a kid yeah so basically uh, like m almost a quarter of the of the of the country voted yes but the rest voted no now that doesn't mean this shit's going to disappear <laughs> it means that the fact that somebody that some country decided to even vote on this that gives that gives you an idea that you know the dialogue has become real now <laughs> yeah it's just a matter of time so if that happens Yes, we you are getting money, but at the same time, <laughs> it's it's a it's like a safety net if jobs are displaced. <laughs> it's it's like a, I see it more as a, of an experiment to see what will we do with the extra money, but also with the extra time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, was it a, a an article that you read? Because I think I read the same article yesterday. Well, there's a bunch of articles because it just it happened last week. <clears throat> on yeah, Switzerland. it also well the article I read also said that it's it's kind of like. Um, to help you uh, take bigger decisions, as in if you're not happy with your job, like, yeah. okay, I'm going to quit this job and I'm not going to give up yeah. until I find one that I want, even if I don't work for a year or something like that. So I think that's also a, a great way to look at it. And also if you hey, if you have a ho hobby or you want to invent something, well, that's extra cash that you put into yeah. your hobby. Well, that's, I think or that's your own the, business. Or, that's the, I think that's like, like the utop utopian view. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, you know, here's twenty five hundred dollars. You know, go and spend it on um, all this shit you want to buy. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think that's the case. That's what you want. What you want is people to actually do something with that money. Um, you know, that's in a positive way. Um, the other thing is that 
I was listening to a to a podcast and they did an interview with people just uh, you know around the streets asking you know what would you do with some extra money would you stop working what would you do some most people uh, you know answer that basically they would not stop working they would take that money and and you know use it for something you know whether it's something they want to do that they can't do because they don't have the extra income I, nobody ever nobody and within those interviews and it was like 25 different people ever said that they would use it to buy themselves, you know, new crap. <laughs> it's more like, oh, I want to do this. Like, most said, like, oh, I want to take a trip or something. But, but you know, most would not stop working. Um, so, the, 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 basically, you're, the, what you were saying was that qu the question is, can we break away from the narrative that we need to work in order to make a living? And that's really the question to open the door to this. Supposedly, <laughs> what I've read and kind of makes sense to me is that Millennials are ready for that, or are the, the the only ones right now that could be that could do that. But any other generation, they don't want to above them. No. It's no. it's such a huge change that yeah. they won't, they won't even know what's going on. No, it's a different world. Yeah, it's a different mentality. It's, a, it's like if I told you right now, you know what, uh, Kim Kardashian is God. You're like, no, she's not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, she is. I mean, the simple fact is that like. Uh, Like I watch, I watch, um, I watch YouTube YouTubers um, yeah. who like uh, like supercars and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm a supercar nut, so I watch those 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 videos from these guys that they you know they produce and whatnot. And um, what's interesting is these guys pretty much live off YouTube. <laughs> um, that that was not possible, you know, 20, 20 years ago when. Even our parents were fucking so when we talk about these things to our parents they're like holy shit like the, these people don't do anything <laughs> yeah they're just uh you know recording videos of their lifestyle over the damn world i mean that's a freaking great way to live but to them it's like they're not doing anything yeah they're not <laughs> because, working because they don't have a nine to five right yeah and that's that mentality that we need to break you know, that necessary that that need to have a nine to five to do all these things to pay the bills and all that shit <laughs> um, but um, you know the basically the there's a guy who who wrote a book called Treconomics where he's where he basically said you know what I wanted to, I'm a huge uh, Star Trek fan and I was looking at the you know there was any anybody who ever wrote a book about the economics of Star Trek because basically in Star Trek there is no there is no no money um, so he didn't find any so he decided to write a book about it which is called Treconomics again And uh, what he talks about there is basically that in order to reach this future, I mean, we already we're already set most most of it's already set. The only the only thing is to change to a future where there is no money. Well, there's a technological component, which is basically in Star Trek. There's something called the replicator, <laughs> where you just basically tell it, you know, I want this, and it and it creates it for you. <laughs> so there's no cost of production. <laughs> That eliminates a lot of a lot of need for jobs, also and uh, the need for for money, basically, because you can you can just ask something for it and they'll it'll produce it. Um, but within the Star Trek universe, there are alien species who do use money. They all have access to a replicator, but they charge people to use the replicator. But the Federation, which is where all the the humans are, you know, there is no such thing. Everything is freaking free. Um, so. You know, can we create a replicator? I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. You know, completely sure about that. I know the intents are there. You know, with 3D printing, and whatnot. But you know, to reach that scale where <laughs> so many people have access to the same thing, you just produce it on the spot. I think we're that's that's a leap. We need a necessary leap. But um, the other components that are there are like GPS. GPS is free. <laughs> the the internet, though we still pay for it. Um, you know, we can imagine a, a, a short-term future where we won't be paying for internet. It's going to be completely free. I mean, there's, there's some, some countries where the internet is completely free, like uh, Estonia. <laughs> I mean, there is no need, you know, it's like they say it's a, it's a human, it's a human, uh, what do they call it, like a, like a human right. So they don't, they don't, you know, basically internet is free for everybody, for every damn citizen. Uh, why why more countries haven't adopted this? Well, you know, <laughs> that's another question for Polly's question. But 
I think the you know in order for us to set ourselves up to to a potential future like Star Trek, is uh, most components are there. I think it's more of a political challenge to decide you know when that happens, <laughs> and and that's really the challenge. <laughs> but I think it's the, some some big change is gonna happen when millennials get into power or get of an age that they are able to have more power. Because right now, all the people in power well, we, are, are... we Well, we, we do have it because most of the... You know, most people don't know this and they, they don't really pay attention to this stuff. But uh, there's never been an era where we have more billionaires <laughs> than today. And most of these billionaires are our age. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know. <laughs> it hurts. We're not. <laughs> but what, what I mean by that is most of these... Um, most of these, you know, people like Elon Musk, like uh, the Air Airbnb guys, like the, I mean, there's there's a bunch of them. Like, obviously, the guy from Facebook. I mean, all these people are, have a different mindset from than from the billionaires past because all these guys are going to give their money away. <laughs> I mean, they already signed a pledge with Bill Gates to give, give most of their money away. And the first the first ones to sign up were actually the guys who were our age, not even the, the, the older people. So why, do, why am I saying this? Because these guys are taking matters into their own hands. The fact of the matter is like Elon Musk. Elon Musk decided to create a car comp electric car company and a freaking space company <laughs> because nobody else would dare do the things that he's but, proposing. I mean, that's, I don't think that's the important part from Elon Musk. I think the important part or the crazy part is if you go to almost anyone in this world and tell them, do you want to invest your money in a car company? Most will say no. That, no, wait, that's not even the craziest part. That um, you produce electric cars. Not a lot of people will buy them because they're very expensive. They're almost $100,000. And most of the time people will be like, oh, I can sell them for $100,000. I'm going to be a millionaire. And then add to that, you're going to lose $4,000 for every car you make <laughs> up until two more years. Almost, if not everyone's gonna tell you, no, that's crazy. That's yeah. no. How will I live? That that's no business. Yeah, and that's what what Elon Musk is doing right now. Yeah, he's limiting the or he's he he's, set the path for. He's losing four thousand dollars per car. Whenever he but sells it, a car, but, he's but losing, it's necessary. It's yeah, necessary it's necessary to, to to create what he wants to create. Yeah, but see, that's gonna that's gonna what's happening is that as more car con car companies jump on the bat wagon as they're already doing, the cost will. Will go down because so many so many other car companies are pretty much they're either on the same on the same angle attacking the same angle or they're looking at different angle to reduce the cost of these things because everybody knows to hit the mainstream they have to reduce the cost um, and 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 I just heard an interview with Elon Musk where he talks about like the cost of the car the 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 Model Three and he says that basically if you take a uh, you know the average price of a car that the average person can 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 afford is like thirty two grand. Mm -hmm. The Model Three is thirty five grand, and he says they still they're still going to reduce that cost. So imagine that that's like a full a thirty two thousand dollar car for the average person is a is is has pretty much all the features you want in a car. The Model Three comes with most of the features already. You can still put more features in there, but it's really like he says like really anybody nobody's really gonna, gonna need all these features. It's more like uh, you just want to enhance the car, <laughs> but most of it's already there. So so that he's they've already set the, the they're already on the standard point to where they want to take it. But <clears throat> see, and that's the thing. He started a lot of other companies are jumping on it, and that's really what's needed to talk about the future like like in trickonomics. We need to have these dialogues. That's why the, the example from Switzerland is so important because even though it didn't pass, somebody's going to figure it out. And by the way, they're not the only ones in Europe trying this. Yeah. <laughs> they're the first ones that came up just because they, everybody bo they put on a boat already. But there's other countries who are already implementing this stuff. Canada. Yeah. So, so, so this, is how, this is how it happens, right? It, it all, all it takes is one guy or one country or one institution to give a shit. And try something, and then and not give up, and not give up, <laughs> and not give a fuck what anybody thinks. Yeah, and then go for it, right? So I mean, that's how it's gonna happen. And, and you know, when we talk about the free money, I don't think money's money's gonna disappear per se <laughs> in a very very in a very very short term. <laughs> um, 
I think the, the way we use money hopefully will change. I think that's the dollar we need to have. Because <laughs> frankly, as we talked about before in previous episodes, uh, most of the stuff that we're creating is a bunch of crap. We don't freaking yeah, need it. Yeah. We don't freaking need this shit. Yeah, we don't. It's just more of the same stuff, lower the cost. Um, and, you know, off we go to, you know, massive consumption of crap that we don't really need. Uh, wh whilst we're, we're killing our planet. <laughs> Producing the same crap. I mean, so... I think that's really the dialogue that, that we need to have, you know, how much of this crap do we really need? Because imagine a future where we have a replicator, you know. What are we going to do with all the trash? With all well, the trash we print out? I know, like, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, if, 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 hey, replicator, I want an iPhone, iPhone you know, there's, 68. There's, even, even with the crap we have already here, here on Earth, like, uh, I don't know if you know, there's, there's a, you know, just between like Hawaii and, uh, you know, our, our continent, there's this massive, I don't know how far, I mean, I don't know the exact number of kilometers, but like a huge, it's also almost like a, like the size of Texas, that there's this all, this trash that just kind of like, like sitting together because of all the trash. I don't know if something has to do with the currents there that the trash goes to that specific place and if you go there it's like you're, you're looking at the sea but you're actually looking like an island of trash that's floating and you know there's people already trying to crack this problem you know some of the things that come up is basically you know you pick that all that crash up and then you launch it to the to the to the to the to the, to the sun to burn off all the trash <laughs> it's damn expensive to launch fucking freaking rockets um I mean, there's a bunch of ideas, but... Let's you know, just wait till Elon Musk volunteers to, I know. <laughs> to use his rockets for I know, <laughs> but, but see, the, the, the problem is that by, by us, you know, knowing that there's trash and there's plastic, most of this plastic is showing up in the food that we consume from the seafood. So, you know, fishermen, I mean, there's wide reports of fishermen picking up, you know, the, you know, all types of fish that have, you know, you know some type of plastic in their, in their, in their stomachs. And this is the stuff we're consuming. <laughs> this is the stuff we're eating. <laughs> That's a huge problem. <laughs> because it's killing, you know, you're killing, kind of, you're dealing with the food chain now. Um, and that imbalances the, the sea and the ecosystem and a bunch of other things. And so, I mean, anyway, we're, the bottom line is we're killing ourselves. <laughs> we're accelerating our own death. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if these things happen, you know, these options, like the, the, the Star Trek economy, you know, they're gonna start becoming a lot more more interesting to talk about, which I think, which I don't, I don't, I don't want it to 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 start, you know, this dog to start when we're basically like at the at the last second, <laughs> and but us humans, you know, we're we suck at this. I mean, we need a crisis to act. <laughs> uh, some but of us, not all. Some of us, yeah, not not. Not all, not not everybody, but the ones in power. But unfortunately, it's it's the the ones the ones like us who don't. It's like we can count ourselves like in, like, both our hands. <laughs> of all the people, not I mean seriously, of yeah. all the people you know, how many people can you put in one hand that are not, you know, pro that are reactive? I mean, you don't have hands to fill them, right? It's like. Not in your whole family, you won't fill all the hands. I won't even fill one hand. Yeah, but see, if, if, no, the, but for the, for the ones who are reactive, you can't fill them with the whole, your whole family. <laughs> right? But proactive people, I mean, I could probably name maybe two or three persons that I know. <laughs> and even though, even, even then I still have my doubts. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if you put like a scale, I say maybe from 1 to 10, I'm still going to put like an 8. <laughs> See, so I have my doubts. <laughs> but, <laughs> because it's not, not a normal way to live. I mean, you're in the constant state of anticipation. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, see, but see, that the point is that the, 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 fact, the fact of the matter is we need to accelerate these conversations. And then accelerate also the... the the action towards those but a lot of people don't care and, I know and that brings me to a point I talked to you about earlier is that we need to separate the people we need to separate the people and get all the people who give a shit <laughs> one part of the country <laughs> and the people who don't give a shit another part of the country well I think I think then I think then like the future of Waterworld remember that movie didn't see it you never saw Waterworld no, I didn't see it 
Okay, so it's like a post-apocalyptic future where the sea, uh, basically every 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 continent or most every continent is, is down under, right? Run under under the sea because something happened, right? And uh, so basically, these people live 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 on the sea, and there's mutants. So one guy has like fins and stuff. <laughs> um, so he's one the one guy who knows that you know the cities are underneath. Most people don't know that's like a like a hidden secret. But he, he, he actually goes down there and watches what happened. Um, but the, there's no money there. I mean, there's exchange. They exchange through through what they call um, uh, like uh, sand, sand or, or tierra. Um, land. Land, yeah. Or well, not not the land, but like the like the dirt. Dirt. They, the they exchange. Dirt. You know, basically they, they use dirt as a currency to exchange for water, to drink water, to do stuff. Yeah, it's really crazy. But it's really crazy. But they, they separate themselves from like they have the scientist, like a nice type of guy working on some, you know, stuff that uh, basically like a balloon and stuff. Uh, they have planes. Uh, they have all these things. But, you know, it, like all they also they also exchange for gasoline, obviously, because they can't travel. Water, water is not gasoline. So there's gasoline. There's there's these uh, abandoned uh, ships that used to cra carry like oil and then they have all these embargoes where they protect it. It's crazy stuff, but we don't want to get there. <laughs> we want to we want to avoid that because it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We just want to separate people who care from the ones who don't. So the people who care can actually yeah. start and try and figure shit out and solve problems. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, and just I, you and I have this, had this conversation before, but you know I don't like the concept of money. <laughs> I think it makes us stupid. Yeah. Um, it's 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 just a. I mean, I I understand like uh, like the invention of money, how it came about. I understand that, but I don't think we never foresaw where it would take us. How to acquire it? Yeah. I think that's the problem. That's acquiring it. Acquiring it and the 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 the. the the way it it you know gives people status, I think is just stupid. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at the like emerging technologies like like Snapchat, you see all these people just posting shit. I mean, seriously, you're spending and people are getting paid to do this stuff. It's all marketing, of course. Um, I mean, for me, the question is. Do we freaking really need this shit? Yep. I know it creates entertainment, all this shit, but and I think that's another that's another uh, like an obstacle because mo I think we're shifting to a society where mo you know most of the money. I mean, isn't it sad that we live in a society where actors get paid more than teachers? Yeah, or <laughs> athletes get paid more than yeah. teachers. Teachers and I'm teachers, scientists. Um, <laughs> it should be the other way around. It, it, dude, Idiocracy, uh, that's a movie, even the, the creator, I think, tweeted that it was meant to be a comedy, not a documentary. And it, it, it says all of those things that, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, in, in the future, people have a toilet seat in their, uh, like, Lazy Boys, and uh, they just eat out of a straw all the time. That's connected to some. They they know to what it is, and they have like a big TV, where you can choose all the channels and entertainment, and and they have like the most stupid entertainment on. It's a TV show about a guy who gets hit hit in the balls, <laughs> and it's called All My Balls or All My Balls something like that, yeah. and and that's it. That's it's a guy, and someone comes up and it hits him in the balls, and then he flies off and he lands on something and gets hit in the balls, and people are like very, um, excited about all this kind of things and it's just entertain me, entertain me, entertain me, entertain me and the basic idea of this film is that a, a normal guy who gets stuck in a like a time capsule thing and ends up in 25, 55, something like that, like 500 years in the future, he's now by default the smartest man alive because <laughs> everyone else is stupidly dumb, <laughs> like it's just but you see it and you're like, okay, the movie came out, I think, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it, it's heading in that direction. From when it came out to now, it's heading in exactly in that direction. I mean, it's, it's, it's 
kind of funny if you watch it and say, oh my God, this is kind of like a documentary, but then again, it's very sad because... It's, it's sad. It's sad because um, we live in a society where stress needs to be eliminated through entertainment. So comedians get paid more than freaking scientists, yeah. teachers, athletes. Also, I mean, really? We pay more, a comedian makes more money, a freaking actor makes more money. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I, man. Uh, Norway, I just read the Norway, and I have a point to, about this. Norway... Just banned the cars. Yeah, in 2025. In 2025. But that's not the, the big thing. They have like a fun thing. That they've been managing for like oh yeah for like over almost two decades yeah with uh I to mean, make to make that future possible yeah yeah and they have right now they could give each of their citizens one hundred seventy eight thousand dollars yeah and they have five million yeah Nor citizens Norway is the is the number one client of Tesla <laughs> they I I, I think they're subsidizing Teslas for every citizen in Norway really yeah they because of that fund they own like one percent of everything in the world. Norway yeah. with the with the with the fund and I mean that's a good government knowing how to manage the money thinking to the future. It's not even about the taxes; it's about the the money they produce with the with the oil. Yeah. And since they produce so much money with the oil, they're the first ones to ban. Yeah, yeah, carbon carbon powered cars. That's crazy, but that's but that's what we need. That's, that's really that's, in, but that's a, that's a that's a very smart. Country. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can we do that with uh, Mexico we'll or the States? We'll never do that. We're stupid. <laughs> We're, well, no, they're stupid. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's people just wanting the money for themselves, yeah. not making the, the, the country a better place to live or... Uh, I don't know, it just stresses me out because I can't do anything about it. <laughs> That's uh, the bottom line here is I get so fucking stressed because I see problems and I can maybe suggest things how to fix them, but no one no one's going to care. No, well, I mean, <laughs> for us, it's more of a finding a way to, I mean, you don't need money to make things, but, well, I mean, at a, a larger scale, you do, <laughs> but initially you don't. Unfortunately, most of these problems are very complex. Um, it's more of a people problem, a political thing. Because uh, if, if you and I, you know, cause this is funny, by the way, because I, you know, Another post, a post I have that's in draft mode in my blog right now, which I'll publish this week, is called "An Open Letter to the Future Mayor of Tijuana." Who won, by the way? Huh? Who won, by the way? I have no, I don't know. I have to check. Okay. But basically, it's me. And it's it's a it's a, the 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 post is about a conversation that I have over the weekend with a guy, who uh, who runs a like a communications company here in Tijuana? He wanted to talk to me because they are launching like a uh, a joint venture with a very known um, media company in the United States. I can't name them name because I you know I may they're not launching soon. They're launching in two months, but it's a very well known name, and they are making a partnership with them to be able to use their name here in Baja and to produce you know, useful content, not the crap that we have here, right? The, and the reason they wanted to talk to me was because they, I was one of their, um, uh, they did a study and I, I got interviewed and basically they said you were the, one of the best interviews we had. <laughs> um, so they came back to me and asked me to some questions regarding what they're doing and whatever I thought and if I wanted to participate in some sense of form. So um, <laughs> the, the conversation that I had with them became the genesis for this blog post because why because it's you know the the media that we have here is is not educating people or uh, helping helping people see differently right the, the way I told them was that if we wanna if we want people to think differently we can bet on them to do them by themselves why because you know people have been uh, conditioned to, to not think for themselves. <laughs> but you uh, can't force someone to not to watch I know, what want. but the media is a big, big... The media that we consume here in Tijuana, or the people consume, because I don't consume media from Tijuana, um, is, a, is, a, is a big origin to this. So the, the, the thing here is they, they, they're not going to play the same game as the other guys. They're going to... And that's the reason why I was interested in, in 
you know, you know, having, you know, collaborating with them because I said, listen, if you're just here to, you know, publish more crap, you know, I'm, I'm not interested because uh, now if you want me to write for this stuff, I mean, you, you got to understand, you know, the way I'm talking to you right now is the way I express myself through any medium. I, I, I call it as it is. And I said the truth and I point, you know, I point fingers and all that shit. I don't, I don't mind. So if that's what you want, let's go. <laughs> and they say yes. Because they said, you know, that's, that's exactly the type of attitude we want. We don't want people just writing shit up for just for, for, you know, for, for marketing purposes. We actually want people who, who, who have something to say that are smart and, you know, they, they care about this stuff, right? Um, so, there, so basically the, where I'm going with this is <laughs> you were saying something about political stuff and I'm writing something about that for here for the city. Yeah. Um, because it's, you know... An open letter to the freaking mayor. <laughs> I don't know the freaking mayor, but I'm gonna make sure he get that shit. <laughs> the thing about Tijuana is you're all almost always like one step away from the I know from the guy who's mayor. But see, I I, I don't wanna I don't wanna keep that. Be, you know what I talked to, to to the guy from this company. You know, I was when I was talking to him, I was not, I, I wasn't there like with the predetermined message. It just came in the moment that we were talking, and I said, shit, I should write this, <laughs> right? Because it's good stuff, right? So I, I decided to start writing it over the weekend um, because I don't, like, I don't like just keeping my thoughts to myself. <laughs> you know, when it's important, you know, I'd rather just fucking say it, you know? And um, if, I, if I can find somebody to help me to distribute it, I will. I don't care. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we need to do something. And if we're living here... Um, you know, cause, you know, this is funny because you and I, we're both, uh, we can, I mean, you live in LA. I, I could easily just go to the States and live over there, but I don't do that. And people ask me, like, why do you, why do you do that? I said, well, because, you know, why go over there and make a difference over there? We're going to make it here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not a, like a, you know, I don't wear like the Mexican flag on myself. I don't really care. I don't, and I don't wear the, the United States flag on myself either. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, a citizen of Earth. So wherever I'm sitting, you know, I want to make a big difference right here. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking about that like two or three days ago. I was like, I don't pledge my loyalty to any country in the world. I'm just like, I'm just a, I just want to make the world a better place. I yeah, don't exactly. care where citizen or of what. World. Yeah, Earth Earthling, period. Yeah, Earthling, <laughs> citizen of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, funny how I was thinking that just a few days ago. See, and but see this like this topic right here that we're talking about. That's it's for everybody. It's not like oh, let's just do it here in Tijuana. I mean, we're not gonna do it here in Tijuana. You're gonna kick us to the curb. and might kill us first. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I keep going back to it, and and my answer is just you can't change people who don't want to change. Yeah. You might be able to open one or two eyes of thousands or millions of people there's like two million people in Tijuana right yeah and I mean I was thinking okay yeah going. If, if you take away their football if you take away away their their <laughs> telenovelas if you, uh, soap operas if shit. <laughs> they're, they're, they're gonna riot yeah the, that's gonna be the first time you see Mexicans get up in arms and riot the shit out of the government when they take away the football the soap operas so those kinds of people, they, they're not going to make a difference. Maybe one or two of those are like, oh, I was thinking about that. I want to make a difference. They might join our cause. But, I mean, there's a lot of people that we don't even need to consider. That just let them die out. Just yeah. Let them do like, their... the, like the I mean, I know there's, there's been uh, proposals of creating like this, this uh, floating city with new government and everything, like with new, new ideas. <laughs> But I think it's just a bunch of like, I mean, it's just a bunch of people that can, they want to do that, but obviously like the means to do it, there is no funding for that. There's not even the technology for a floating huh? city. Is there a technology for a floating city? Yeah. How? Well, I mean, there's, material science is, is big right now. So most most of that idea has to do with, you know, creating like a floating city. Because with a video game already covered that. Yeah, but I don't know that's a like, video game. This is like, I, but I don't know shit. if it's real science or not. Well, the, what what video game is it? What, what's Bioshock Infinite? Okay, so so what? And but the, here's the thing: in that game, 
they stole that technology from an alternate universe oh, well, there that you go. developed it. There you go. <laughs> there is no alternate <laughs> universe known right now. We like to imagine there is, but there isn't. <laughs> we are our own freaking universe right now. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, there's ideas to do that stuff, but, you know, it's not like... Uh, See, but but see, the the initial ideas are to make a floating city to 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 uh, to create more green parts. That's that's really the motivation. More green parts. Yeah. As in trees. And like yeah. All that shit. Yeah, like food, all that stuff. Yeah. Not to do it in land. Why? Well, because if the one of the problems with climate change is methane, and one of the biggest. Um, Generators of methane are cows, <laughs> um, right? So how do you produce new food? Well, you can't do it by having more cows. We don't want that. Yes, we need. We don't necessarily need meat, but can we produce meat in a different way? They're finding out. How can we accelerate that? Well, they're trying different things out and see. <laughs> what if? You so then we have to produce so much damn methane. <laughs> what if you plant? Um, things on one side of the country and move all the cows to the other side of the country. No, they've tried different things, but... Um, see, the other thing is that we're, we're... Like I said at the beginning, we're fucking ourselves up the ass because uh, we can't just stand ourselves from, from, pr from consuming more. We've got to stop consuming. Um, that's, 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 that's the challenge that we have. If we want to, you know... And we're not, by the way, we're not gonna, we're not going to eliminate climate change. It's going to happen. We're already, we're already Dude, on the tipping line. It's June. It's June is freaking... It's cold. Yeah. It's cold. No, and, and, and one month from now, it's going to be freaking hot. This, yeah. This is going to be the, the hottest... And I think hottest year this ever. Christmas... It's going to be freaking... It's going to be hot. Yeah. Like, like like this year, like this past Christmas, it was just one month of like... Uh, it was cold. cold. Yeah. And and that was that was like in January. <laughs> Cause well, like I think it was near the end of December. Near the like, near the end, but it's more. But it was more, more. Yeah, it was more January. Yeah. And then it was, it was like October, November. Like February, we're like like right now. In November, it was hot. Yeah, it's like right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But see, the evidence is already there, and there's way way more evidence. But there's no climate change. But the bottom line is that we, <laughs> you know, in order for us to uh, to reach like a Trekonomics future is, or a Star Trek future where there is you know money is not the the main. The main thing we have to stop, uh, you know, thinking just for, you know, being so damn selfish. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I mean that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. I, I think that's that's the hardest part to crack. I mean, it's just more it's more of a human nature thing than just a uh, pure technological challenge. And you know, the technological challenge is really if if we get people to to focus on. You know, actually creating shit that matters, and, as opposed to just uh, making more freaking YouTube videos and uh, Snapchats <laughs> of themselves, uh, you know, bullshitting around your lifestyle. <laughs> I think we we need more psychologists <laughs> studying why we watch YouTube channels. Oh, there's there's a bunch of studies about this stuff. Because there's a bunch of studies about. I I I I played for one month pre World of Warcraft, and I I was a avid it's player. It's called it's called it's called eliminating boredom. That's what that's what Netflix does, and that's what YouTube does. No, but in my case, in my case, I was, it was different. I, I wasn't eliminated boredom because I wasn't bored <laughs> to start off with. Not that I was watching videos and I wasn't bored. It was more like a... It was kind of like remembering the old times because I was watching YouTube videos of, like, the top 10 glitches of Warcraft, the top 10 blah, 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 blah. And they were talking mostly about... Uh, it was I think it was two two different accounts. They were talking mostly about vanilla WoW, which is WoW before all the 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 uh, expansions, mm -hmm. and it it was just taking me back to to I was like oh I was there I was there I was there I I know that that stress I know that problem I know all about that stuff and it and I just couldn't stop watching, I mean and, and that's why I said we need more like psychologist or someone to explain to me why. I knew I shouldn't be watching, but I wanted to watch. I don't know. I just I I, I knew I couldn't stop, and I wanted to stop, but I, I couldn't stop. It was so nostalgic, or or there was something about it. I was just like addicted. Yeah, to I mean, it. we can't. I mean, I mean, there's a there's a part of it that we can't uh, help ourselves. Like, 
like I like I was saying, I was I watch YouTubers. I mean, like I like watching cars, <laughs> all that stuff. I mean, frankly, I do, um, and that's just an interesting. But it's not like I watch it every freaking day. It's more like, uh, you know, if I see see it on there, I'll be like, okay, let me. Or you can click that watch later thing, and then you know you're off. But I think uh, that's just a, like a normal thing. But I think I don't think we can. Uh, like 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 I was saying, you know, there's there's a there has to be a balance of this stuff. I think the balance for most people is is towards the stupid shit, <laughs> right? Like like I know my balance. I keep I, I, I I'm I'm pretty good at, um, you know, watching over myself and and paying attention to as to what I'm consuming. So I know for a fact that most of the stuff that I consume on a daily basis has nothing to do with my own you know personal boredom. It has to do with my, you know, stimulating my intellect. <laughs> Um, and as long as that, that equation is, is more towards there, you know, I'm good. <laughs> if I can have 10 or 20 minutes in one day to, you know, entertain myself with a YouTube video, that's fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not a parent like you, so you have to like distribute your time a little differently. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, 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 it's how you play with this stuff. Right. But I think most people are like on the other end of the step spectrum. I mean, I, I, I have, just like freaking robots. I have nothing, nothing, nothing against that Chewbacca lady, but... Chewbacca the, lady? Do you, know, you don't know about the Chewbacca lady? Well, maybe some of our listeners know, but if you don't, that's big, very good of you. <laughs> it's it's a, a, a lady that shares a video that she buys a mask of Chewbacca for, her, for herself, yeah. and she's like, she can't stop laughing about it, and she's like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let my, my children keep it. They might play with it, but it's going to my room. And you guys, you're going to get a laugh out of this because you got to see this. And then she puts the mask yeah. on and then she ah, and it makes a sound yeah. effect. And she's like hysterically laughing. She can't stop laughing. And she's like, oh, you, you don't even, you just need to open your mouth. It comes out of the mask. Ah, laughing, laughing. She, she went viral. But I mean, even the next day she was on James Corden. Yeah. For uh, for something, and I have nothing against her, but I didn't laugh at it, and I don't think she deserves to be famous just for being herself or yeah. silly. It's ridiculous. I mean, maybe if if she says, okay, you know what? Maybe if I make some money out of this, I'm gonna send it to charity or something like that. Then I'm like, okay, let's all laugh about it, but. I mean, people get famous for, for stupid reasons. Yeah, for stupid reasons because instead of making people, another people celebrating their stupidity. Yeah, it, 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 just I because don't... they entertain you. Oh, well, look at all these views I have on YouTube. Oh shit, no, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just, it's... You know, one one. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna mention it because you just mentioned it. That it's, a, it's it's good that I didn't know who she is, <laughs> but like like I don't watch TV so. I don't really watch TV. I don't. I don't watch TV shows or anything like that. Uh, so for me, it's like a like a good signal that I'm not, uh, you know, going to the other side. Is when somebody tells me like, "Did you watch this? You watch that? You know who this is? Who you know who that is?" I'm like, I've heard about it, but I've never watched it. But I'm. I always ask like, should I? Should I care? <laughs> like is the, it? Is it important? Like the two girls, one cup. You yeah, it, but it's you never shit. It. Like it's like that. So I always respond like, "Do you know who Elon Musk is? Do you know freaking?" So freaking um, <laughs> Peter Diamandis is. I mean, do you know these? No, they're fucking no. Okay, so they're doing interesting, sh actually interesting shit that might you know actually change our world as opposed to uh, you know whatever the fuck Brian Cranston is doing and whatever the freaking program that name is. <laughs> I actually told my mom and sister about Elon Musk. I, I told them, do you know who Elon Musk is? No, we don't. He's the guy who does the Tesla cars. Oh, okay. And I was like, well, you should know about him because he's going to change the future. I mean, the future you receive in five to ten years is going to be because of that guy. He's, he's going to change your life, yeah. basically. So try and, like, look the, for the, him online or see what he's doing. The director of that freaking telenovela ain't doing shit for your yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, and I, and, I, and I told them um, I told them about the Hyperloop, the SpaceX. I told them about everything. They had no idea. Yeah, most people don't. But, um, anyway, so... Uh, you know, what do you guys think about the the Trekonomics and, and you know just the, like the just the concept of 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 the Star Trek economy? Um, also, you know, what how do we put ourselves in the path towards that that future? 
And, um, you know, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll, t we'll talk to you next week.